Hi everybody, I'm Katie Elizabeth at Crafting the Classy Home. This will be craft vlog number three. If you're new here, uh, I do all kinds of crafting. If you're um, returning, welcome back. I will do like chapter stamps so that you guys can move around and see the crafts that you are particularly interested in. This is my craft space. Um, I'm slowly kind of working on getting it all put together. I know last time these bookshelves didn't have the doors on yet and they have gotten that far. Um, got the doors on, got some stuff in it. Doesn't look too pretty yet. Uh, we'll work on that, but um, slow progress is better than no progress. So let's get into it. For cross stitch the last few weeks, I've been working um, primarily on my citrine from the Shooting Star Collection by Carolyn Manning Designs. This is kind of my fallback project. I don't, um, that's kind of what I work on when I don't have anything else to work on. It is destined to be in my son's room. I'm working on a kind of a major overhaul of his room and I'm sure I'll show you guys that at some point. This is, oh, I think I've got it. Yeah, it goes this way. Um, it is using the called for DMC. It's a 14 count Ada, nothing too special there. I uh, um, somehow managed to lose a page of my pattern, which is fine. I have the PDF, so I'll just print it off, but I didn't want to go through the work when I had it all out and ready to stitch on. So I kind of moved where I was working on. I had been working along the bottom. Um, so then I moved to this area here. This is page five. Uh, page so I had just a little bit kind of on this column that I finished up and then um, this column here is what I worked on um, that is citrine by Carolyn Manning designs uh, the other cross stitch that I had been working on was kind of a design of my own a project of my own I have a sister who's going through kind of a tough time and I have a good idea on how to get her cheered up so our mother always when we're going when we call her for a little moral support she always says keep your chin up so I wanted to stitch that for her um, in some cheerful colors I went um, kind of through my stash and then to Joanne this isn't all of them but picked out a bunch of kind of cheery orangey yellow kind of colors um, and then I wrote out in my handwriting the alphabet um, and then charted it so I've gotten um, ABC I think there's Yes, there's a D. <laughs> For a second there, I thought I skipped a letter. A, B, C, D, and then I'm starting on the E. Um, and I was just kind of in the charting software, changing it to whatever color I had used to try to decide what colors to use in the final project. Unfortunately, somewhere along the line, I got messed up. I don't know which colors were actually used. I think I'm just going to kind of start over. I will make these this chart available to you all when it's finished um, I'll just leave the colors off since I no longer know what they are so um, yeah just some letters just some alph alphabet that I'm working on and that is what I have done for cross stitch let's do yarny crafts last time I talked to you I had been working on a couple of hats one for my mom and one for my sister those are almost done okay so this is the hat for my mom this is apple pie by tin can knits super cute it is knit in malabrigo rios cyan i talked about how it has got the double over brim love that um just kind of a cute little lattice work cabling pattern this does need to be washed and blocked and then it'll be off to my mom. The other hat was one for my daughter, also using Malabrigo Rios. This is in fuchsia. This is crocheted. This pattern, um, what was it? Twilight slouch hat. Not as crazy about it. I am not as skillful at crochet as I am at knitting. Um, need to spend a little more time learning or doing some research on how to not jog uh, on the round. It's very visible to anybody who knows what they're looking at. Uh, but it's a hat. It's com almost completed. The other weird thing with this pattern, it didn't have, 
It had optional decreases, and this is as far down as it decreased um, in, in just two rows. Otherwise, it just wanted you to cinch the top, which I suppose for a slouchy hat makes makes a little sense. Um, it's, you know, and crochet just doesn't have the stretch that knit has. So, you know, I'll cinch this up. Um, and it's, it's, it's not, it's more of a fashion hat, which is fine for the fall and the spring. One of the other things about crocheted hats that I'm not crazy about is this one has kind of a mock rib on it. And you'll see it just, it doesn't stretch the way that, uh, like this is a two by two rib in knitting. Like that, that's got some good stretch. Same yarn. Um, so that's, that's one of my main reasons for, for liking knit fabric for hats instead of crochet. Some um, things that I do like about this pattern, it uses primarily um, half double crochets for the patterning. And an interesting part of that is it has you work into the third loop, which I hadn't done before. So we know when we, you know, half double crochet, you, you know, pick up, well, you yarn over and pick up. So now you have three, right, loops on, on your hook and you just go through all three. So when you look at those three loops, you have like your normal V and then there's a, a loop behind it. So when you work, this pattern has you work into that, that third loop. And it, and it turns that first V that you normally work into kind of down and forward. And that's where those lines are coming from. And that, that's some very interesting patterning there. I, I do like how that turned out. So uh, my daughter wanted a big floofy palm on it. So we'll cinch this off and add the palm. We called the local yarn shop. They're awesome. Asked if they had any in stock. And they did, um, even though they're out of season. So that's great. Took her down there with her almost finished hat and let her pick out which palm she wanted. And this is what she chose. <laughs> big, floofy palm. This is Rowan um, Pom Pom. It says it's vegan fibers, acrylic and polyester. It comes in five natural shades. This one is Fox Steel Gray. This is just, this is adorable. I mean, this will be a very cute hat for her to wear come fall. Yes, last time I talked to you guys, it was still 30 degrees outside. Now it's 85. So these hats will just be <laughs> set aside for the time being and that that's fine. <clears throat> one other knitting project that I've been working on and I know I showed you all um, the last time I talked, well, maybe not last time, maybe the first um, crafting vlog, was um, a 10 stitch blanket that I've been working on. This is also part of um, my son's room makeover, like I showed you for the citrine, citrine um, cross stitch project. Almost done with the first ball. Oh, where is it even? There it is with the first ball of this gradient yarn. Kind of goes from a yellow out to a red. Unfortunately, I was in the car with my sister and I was knitting and I dropped a stitch and I thought I caught it and I went to go keep working and um, I did not catch it and it ran down. So interesting. So the way that these, that these, yeah, I'll show you it, that these um, blankets or I suppose however, whatever object you want to make with this 10 stitch is made is you kind of knit back and forth, right? And you go around and then you make these mitered corners and you go around and around. Um, so when I get to like the pickup, you, you pick up along, along the edge to keep it attached. Um, when I get to the pickup, I slip the last stitch. I pick up my stitch on my you know, previous rows um, edge and then I pass that slip stitch over. And that creates this ridge that you guys are seeing on each of the, the color changes. Uh, that's the stitch that I dropped somehow so it ran down you can see that there's still the knitting back and forth here but that it's separated down the middle there um, not sure exactly how to fix it this got put in timeout it's it's been naughty um, I will come back to it and figure it out but I was I was pretty frustrated with it and I was very excited to show you guys I know I didn't show you last time that I um, I knit back and forth on this 10 stitch without turning it well I can't do that right now because I have it 
uh, trying to save as many stitches as possible until I do some surgery. So hopefully we can get that fixed up. If you guys are interested in seeing how I figure it out, let me know. Drop it in the comments below and maybe I can do a little vlog on, on or a little tutorial on, on some knitting surgery. Uh, let me know what you think. So as far as acquisitions for um, kind of the yarny crafts, of course I got the pom-pom to finish Claire's hat. But I also got a couple of new stitch dictionaries. Well, let's show you guys those. All right, we'll show you this one first. The Complete Book of Crochet Stitch Designs. This is written by Linda Shepper. So I'm excited to dig into this. I do, um, yarn crafts are kind of my first crafting hobby, so I'm very comfortable with them. Interestingly in these, I won't go too close, but it has um, a color picture, it has the diagram, and then it also writes it out, which is kind of nice, gives you um, multiple options to see how different things are done. There are 500 different stitches in there. This is actually my first, first, yes, um, crochet stitch dictionary. So I'm glad that it's kind of a big one, has a lot of different um, options in it, different ideas. Um, knitting, I have a lot of knitting <laughs> stitch dictionaries. Um, I guess the biggest ones probably are the Barbara Walkers. I have all of those. And then a few other ones. I was looking um, to add some fresh ideas into the mix. So I did find the 260 Exquisite Patterns by Hitomi Shida, which is a Japanese knitter. This one has just um, color pictures and the um, charts, which is fine. I'm comfortable reading charts, especially in knitting, but I'm excited to dig into this and take a look. So those are kind of my acquisitions. We, we have beading. Beading's my newest hobby. I've had so much fun diving into this. It has been kind of like difficult finding like step-by-step -step beginner tutorials. Not that there aren't really, really well done tutorials out there, um, you know, showing you exactly how to create a finished product. However, like with knitting, I, it was very linear. I learned the knit stitch, I learned the purl stitch, and then I learned a yarn over, and then I learned a decrease. Um, you know, with cross stitch, I guess that's pretty straightforward, but stitching in general, you know, you, you um, kind of, it's a very linear progression. There's very basic skills. You know what they are. It's um, well demonstrated in the community. In beading, it's it, it I've, I've found it to be quite different. That there is this beautiful design, here's how you make it. But it doesn't break down like those beginner skills, beginner tools, beginner items, like this is what you need to know. These are your foundational practices for beading. So I've been kind of really digging into that, searching for that, and maybe if I can't find them, I'll create them as I learn more. Um, but I will show you what I have been working on for beading. Oh, there it is. Last time I showed you um, just a little charm kind of thing that I had made on a head pin. Um, my plan was to make some scissor pops. So I have um, just two really primar primary primary. Um, scissors that I use for my stitching and those are the two that I wanted to do. I have one that's that oil slick design and another one that's kind of the stork um, with like some pastel patterning on it. So I um, found a, well first off I went to the, the bead store, my daughter loves the bead store so we went to the bead store and I didn't really have anything in mind. I just kind of browsed and bought things that kind of called to me knowing that those were the two things I wanted to do. I then um, went to some of the beading YouTubers that I really like and just found a bracelet actually pattern that looked simple um, enough um, and that I had material that I thought would work for it. So I made a little scissor or fob um, out of some beads. So this is following a tutorial tutorial by Alicia Beautiful Nights, Beautiful Nights, and I can certainly link it. Cannot remember exactly what she called it, 
it is using see this is where you really see how much I don't know um, some I think these are 11 seed beads these um, there's some uh, Preciosa by Cones and I think those are just like three millimeter rounds they've got some sort of a, I think they call it a B finish on those beads and it makes it kind of look like that oil slick so that is um, what I finished for beading like, you know, I told you guys last time I had a hard time finding the lobster clams that were big enough. Um, they did have those at the bead store as well. And I'll link to the bead store that I went to um, that they can come off and be put back on my scissors. So that is my beading. I, I went a little crazy in the bead store. We'll show you though. I do have some beading tools that have been either kind of inherited or just found along the way. Um, but we saw this set, any beater, anybody in crafting has seen these, I'm sure. Um, just like there's the oil slick and the scissors, we found the Chroma Beadsmith. This is the cutters, right? Yep, the flush cutter. Um, they have the full series of tools that you might need, but I did pick up um, cutters that I have. I've kind of abused. I used them to cut, I think it was... Um, like artificial flowers, fake flowers for an arrangement and, and it kind of butchered the cutting edge on them. So I, I did thought, I thought that I would replace those ones first and get nicer ones. So I purchased that. Um, what else did we get at the bead store? We had a lot of fun at the bead store. Also, I purchased a variety of seed beads um, with the intention of making that fob for my other scissors. Um, however, as I've been looking kind of into um, different tutorials to try to follow to make the second key fob, I have found that the seed beads that I bought are big. Yeah, these, these are big in, in the beading world. <laughs> um, these are eight O's, um, um, which I very rarely seen, see in, in the different tutorials I've watched. But these are, I think these are all, all Mayuki, Mayuki seed beads. Um, this is Lavender Ceylon Pearl. Uh, Spearmint Galvanized PC Finish. Uh, purple Lined Amethyst. And this is Dark Blue Lined Aqua. So we will add these to the stash. Maybe we'll find a good use for them for the key fob or scissor fob rather. Maybe we won't. That's okay. It's part of the learning process. I also got, um, in addition to those lobster clamps, I also um, got some jump rings, some bigger jump rings, thinking that maybe those would be useful when making the scissor fobs. The other, oh yes, I picked up some beading needles. These are size 10 Toho. Oh, I bet those are Toho, not Mayuki. Since these are Toho beading needles, I think that that store only carries Toho. Uh, but it doesn't say on here what they are. Um, other beads that I picked up, this has kind of got that oil slick look as well. These are called Gem Duos. They have two holes in them. They've been very popular in some of the different designs that or um, tutorials that I've looked at. So this is Czech Gem Duo. It's Jet AB. It's got that same AB finish on it. And this is Full Labrador. So don't know what they're for yet. We'll hang on to them and we'll let them tell us what they want to be. Oh, those are kind of the big things. Oh, I did grab some um, Fireline as well which is what I used for the, the scissor fob. But I think that kind of brings everybody up to date on what I've been crafting and what I have acquired. Uh, I do have some plans coming up. Um, I guess I've kind of been hanging out in the back burner. I've been wanting to make some project bags. So um, sewing machine came back from being serviced and has just been sitting there and it's sad, it wants to be used. So hopefully next time I'll have some sewing to show you. Um, that other scissor fob I'd like to work on. I'll finish up the hat, um, repair the blanket, and I'm still waiting 
to hear about that big project that I really am excited to share. And then we'll do a separate video on that for you all. So if you enjoyed seeing what I've been working on, I would really like you guys to subscribe, come back and see me, leave some comments. I'd love to hear from you. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.